Welcome to dealing with materials data. We are looking at collection analysis and interpretation of data. Uh, we are in the module on data processing and uh, in this session we will discuss robust estimates. The estimation of standard deviation and standard error that we have been discussing so far is sensitive to outliers. It is because we are calculating the um, mean squared deviation and if some data point is really far away from the mean that is going to dominate the analysis. One way to avoid this problem is to remove from analysis the data that is deviating significantly. We have discussed what it means to say some data deviates significantly. So, if it is more than pre sigma or 3.5 sigma for example, but you should always clearly indicate that you are removing such data and we have discussed this earlier. And it is always a better idea not to remove data from analysis. So, it is better if we can actually come up with an estimation method where we do not have to uh, remove outliers for example. And second problem is that if the data is not normally distributed, the assumption that we made about normal and students t uh, chi squared etc. are not valid. So, we want to have estimates for means and spread of data etc. Uh, which are uh, sort of agnostic to the type of distribution and with outliers playing very uh, nominal role or very less role in determining the uh, quantities. Robust methods are uh, based on ranking order of the data and they are actually methods which can be used to make sure that outliers do not play a significant role and it does not really matter what the type of distribution is. So, one um, estimate, so rank based estimate for example, uh, the estimated mean of a distribution is basically average of the observations. Suppose if you assume that your distribution is symmetric, but it is not normal, you can use median instead of mean, right? Because mean is uh, sensitive to outliers, but median is not. So, you can use median and uh, me median also has this property that about median if you go on either side the number of positive and negative deviations are the same, right. So, you can obtain median by using the sign of the deviations for example, okay. Now, you can also give confidence intervals uh, which are sign based. Let us consider our conductivity measurement as an example. So, how do we calculate confidence interval for this case uh, which is based on uh, the, the sign based confidence interval. Okay. We calculate the median and we generate the signs positive or negative about this uh, median and uh, we calculate the binomial probability for uh, so many positives and so many negatives or successes and failures right pluses and minuses. It could be a robust method, but it could be quite uh, inaccurate also. So, we will uh, do this analysis and see how it uh, works out for our conductivity data, okay. Right. So, we have the uh, data, conductivity data and uh, we are going to get the median, right. And we have also sorted the data uh, in um, increasing order and the median is 101.3. So, now what we are going to do, we are going to count So, what this is doing is that okay, there are, there are 20 data points. So, we start this uh, uh, j with a value of 0 and we go and uh, calculate this uh, conductivity value minus median. If it is greater than 0, uh, we say that uh, um, j increases by 1. 
So basically it tells you how many data points are greater than median and of course you can also do less than and that will give the exact opposite. So, so let us do this and what is the j value you can see j is 7 and if you did the other way j should be 13 because that gives you the number of times it is uh, um, so in this case you do not see because there are conductivity values which are exactly equal to the median value itself. So it is neither greater than nor less than but equal to ok. So, so in the in the case uh, um, where it is greater than 0, so we found j is to be 7 right. So now we calculate the uh, binomial probability distribution for so many um, so this uh, two accounts for the fact that it is factorial 20 j uh, factorial j factorial 20 minus j you can also have factorial 20 by factorial 20 minus j factorial j. So that is for 2 and 2 to the power minus 20 because for uh, uh, each case it is either plus or minus. So there is 0.5 probability and there are 20 of them. So 1 by 2 to the power 20 is what this value is. So this gives you something like uh, 0.15. Uh, so in other words the probability that um, the, the median lies in this uh, range. Um, is about 15 percent as you can see it is uh, uh, it is not very accurate uh, there are better estimates and uh, you can get better numbers uh, from those estimates. But, but this uh, is a very robust estimate because it does not assume anything about the underlying probability distribution and uh, so um, such rank based estimates in, in, in many cases are also very useful. So we will continue there is one more uh, um, robust estimate which is based on uh, bootstrap method and that will bring us to the end of this module on uh, simple data processing. We will continue with more uh, involved data processing in terms of uh, regression and fitting and so on. But before we do that we will look at bootstrap method as the last method for um, uh, this kind of estimation. Thank you.